Well, hello there. How is everyone? You amazing, amazing, beautiful, wonderful people. Oh, my burn is kind of calming down a little bit. It's, yeah, let's not talk about it. I know, sun cream. You're looking absolutely amazing, by the way. Not like a fucking lobster like me. And what are we talking about in this video? We're talking about fact or fiction. What's fact or fiction? Annie Elise, 10 to life. Look, some of you who have been around the channel for a while will know that we do not always see to eye. See, see to eye? See eye to eye. You know, there's been issues in the past. But <laughs> what I'm going to say is this, look. Some people say, harsh, but you all you talk about, you're, you're pro-burger, clearly pro-burger, and you're pushing a specific narrative, you're pushing the innocent narrative, and look, this is the narrative I'm pushing, I do not believe, and I don't believe I'm saying this again, I don't believe that there is enough evidence in the public domain for anybody of sound mind to 100% commit this guy to death for this crime. And I'm going to explain why in a second. But we do seem to have a specific narrative being pushed by a specific type of person and type of people, that being mainstream media, the types of people like News Nation, Dateline, Need I Go On, Need I Go On, all of the all of the big hitters, if you like, in the true crime niche, in media, are pushing the Brian Koberg, have done this, and every single time there's a little, how can I say, there's an opportunity for them to real tune in and go real hard on the Brian Koberg is this monster narrative, they do so. And look, I don't know whether they're just playing it safe, because ultimately, like I've said in the past, it is, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that Brian Koberger could have done this crime. Of course he could. This, I'm not ignorant. I'm not stupid. I do understand that he could have done it. The issue that I have is that I haven't seen no evidence. And the evidence that exists, it, there's, it's got more holes than a colander. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's bizarre. It's, it's completely and utterly bizarre. For instance, the White Hyundai Elantra. Brian drives a 2015 White Hyundai Elantra. FBI specialist notes that the White Hyundai Elantra seen on video around the 1122 King Road area is a 2011 to 2013. So, he doesn't believe that that car matches Brian Koberger's. Now, some people say, oh, but they changed it. Yes, they changed it later, after they likely knew that Brian Koberger's car was a 2015. So, they adapted it to fit. And this is what we talk about. We talk about parallel investigations. We talk about reverse engineering. And you have Annie Elise now, who we know is kind of in cahoots with mainstream media she's kind of she's grown and with that growth she has kind of joined allegiances with some of these big powerful corporations and systems that have a specific agenda and she did a video that, uh, that a load of people pointed me to thank you very much for doing so kelly and kelly and co and it was a case of I thought to myself, look, let's let's read it, let's listen to it, let's let's have a look and see what she says, and, and I, I listened to it, and and what I got from it was, it was as if she hadn't read it, she hadn't been keeping up with it, and I think to myself, Do you know what, when you get to a certain size, you're earning a certain amount of money, you no longer like me, I film my videos, I edit my videos, I upload my videos, I deal with all the comments, I deal with everything, There's, I do not outsource anything to anyone surrounding this channel but when you get to a certain size you certainly do you get editors in you get people who'll go out and do research for you they'll put together scripts for you and you're just the face in front of the camera that talks and that's what i felt from that video and i mean don't no disrespect but i do have a problem when that person has got such a clout within the community and they've got such a following that they then spout things and try and be clever with it and i'll give you an example that like the, the stalking narrative, like she tries to adapt this slightly by being clever with the verbiage to say like surveilling and make it like that's a, there's a difference between the two. He's not stalking them, he's surveilling them. 
when in reality, you know that the surveillance of someone and the stalking of someone, surveillance is when someone of professional grounding, whether that be law enforcement, whether that be military, for instance, and they are surveilling a target. That is kind of a, how can I say, more of a professional word for stalking. You know, a stalker might be sitting in a bush. They might be putting cameras out. They might be looking, you know, hiding in the garden or hiding in a dustbin and lifting the lid up and peeking out. You know, that's stalking, but in reality, that's that's no different than surveillance. It's no difference. The only difference is you've got murderer versus law enforcement or military. Does that make sense? So you can't be clever with it. The fact of the matter is, within the court system... The defence and the prosecution have both said that there's no evidence of stalking. There's no evidence of stalking. And there's no connection between Brian Koberger and the victims. There's no connection. Now, Ann Taylor wouldn't be able to stand up in court and turn around and say there was absolutely no connection between the victims and my client if she knew that there was proof that he was surveilling them even. And we wanted to be, get clever with the verbiage of it all. Does that make sense? You know, you can't... It don't end there. It was, there was just so many little things that have been brought up that have been sort of knocked on the head, put to bed. And I found Annie Elise to be very, again, the, the, the bias, the clear bias of it all was, again, doing no, no different than what News Nation and co do. They'll fixate on one specific thing and they'll push it out there. Like it was Annie Elise who was one of the per first people who mentioned the knife sheath. And that's kind of stuck in people's heads, that the knife sheath is absolute proof Brian Koberger did the crime. But what she and all the others fail to address is the fact that all of the, the paperwork, all of the gathering information around that situation... There's a problem with it. J just the sheer speed with which it was done doesn't seem to be possible. The values of, of DNA, what they had, doesn't seem to be viable in order to do what they claim to have done. And there seems to be so much hush-hush around that. You know, they talk about the, the victims being asleep but yet they failed to address that there was noises and it was JB Gunner only, I think it was earlier today or yesterday, was saying, you know, we was hearing noises on a camera that was 50 yards away outside the property attached to the wall of another fucking house. And that's hearing whimpers, that's hearing thuds, that's hearing dogs barking. But yet you've got two people within the house who seemingly didn't hear anything that would alarm them enough to call 911 for an eight hour period. We hear from the likes of Howard Bloom, for instance, that they were texting one another. They were awake, they were texting. Law enforcement themselves seemingly corroborates this by saying that the timeline has kind of been attached to the phones of the surviving roommates. And we're still calling them victims, by the way. And I don't see how they're victims, because to me... They were never, ever targets. They were never, ever in danger. Because if they were in danger, the person who entered this house and executed four other people would have booted down every fucking door in that house and executed every last person in that building. The people who were, were killed were killed for a specific reason. And that is that there was either two targets across two floors and each of them two targets sadly had someone with them that copped that copped the brunt of being there. It was collateral damage. Or there was four targets, and the people who were targeted were, were executed, and, and they, they left the house. But they were never in danger. In my eyes, they were never in danger. What more could they do? We heard that Dylan Mortensen was shouting out, shut the fuck up. We've got statements about Dylan Mortensen, for instance, saying that everybody was in their rooms by four o'clock in the morning, but then she turns around and says that she was awoken by or around 4 a.m. Well, how the fuck did you know who was in the house and where they were if you were asleep? Do you see what I mean? It's all these little things, the devil's in the detail. And the funny thing is, is all the details get left out when the details 
raise some form of doubt. What we're doing is we're seeing people with real powerful voices purely pushing specific things to anchor to a specific narrative, to, to push a specific agenda. And in the Ido 4 case, it seems that everybody with the biggest mouths are just wanting to say that Brian Koberger did the crime. But the funny thing is, and I don't know whether anybody's catching on to it, certainly the people who are in the Brian Koberger's guilty camp, they won't. But other people are starting to cotton on to it. And that is that the people who are trying to push that Brian Koberger is guilty and deserves to die are the people who have to utilise lies and things that have been proven to be false or there are issues with it to anchor their point. You know, there was no mention of how relevant Cy Ray's last you know, his last spout in court was for these guys, you know, to turn around and say, the evidence that you've got is exculpatory to the client. You know, no mention of any kind of prosecutorial misconduct that does seem to be the case here, with things going missing, things not being handed over. And the stuff that does exist, exists in a way that is incomplete, it's inaccurate, and it's exculpatory but that's okay. Let's just ignore that. And just for the sake of the views and the clicks and, and being part of the in crowd, let's just crucify the guy. Fuck what's right. Let's have him up against the wall. Let's get him executed. It's just not right. And if you follow it, then what are you doing? Let me know down below where you are. What do you think about the video? Fact, fiction, bit of both? Or just another person who has just succumbed to... I know where my bread's buttered, and that's with these guys. I will get paid more if I agree to toe the line and follow these people. Don't sell out. You don't need to sell out. You just need to be open. You need to be honest. You need to have an open mind and stop pushing false, fake narratives. If he's guilty in the end, he'll get found guilty in the end. But right now, how can you make him guilty? Simple, by pushing stuff that ain't right. Catch you all in the next one.